On our outside view today, it's the L.A. Rams. Lindsey Theory, ESPN's NFL Nation, covers the Rams. They're in town with an empty stadium taking on the Eagles. Lindsey, this is a team, they seem to know each other pretty well. They didn't play last year. They played the previous two seasons. It's the first and second pick of the 16 draft. The Eagles have gotten the better of the Rams, but feels like the Eagles have the arrow pointing down, and after a Sunday night win, does it feel like the Rams, after not making the playoffs last year, feel a little bit more, um, you know, uh, excited for this season. It didn't seem like there was a lot of buzz around this Rams team, but that opening night win, they look good. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. A little bit more buzz. I mean, you hit the nail on the head. Kind of going into the season, I think there was a lot of questions. What does this Rams team have? Obviously, you have Aaron Donald. You have Jalen Ramsey. But this offseason was unlike any other in the Sean McVay era in which they saw more stars depart than arrive here to L.A., uh, but for early returns, we can't get too big on week one. It's like overreaction week, right? But the early returns of uh, first-year coordinator Brandon Staley's defense, it obviously held there in the fourth quarter. And then on offense, we saw kind of what it's going to look like without Todd Gurley, and so far, so good for the Rams. They ran the ball 40 times. Jim Schwartz said they're committed to the run. You mentioned all the stars leaving. When we think of the Rams under McVay, it's this, you know, a flashy offense, but do they want to be a, a, a more, you know, do they want to be recognized more as a committed to the run 40 times a turnaround and how the Brown type of team? Well, I think they really got away from the run last year, right? And that had part to do with uh, Todd Gurley and the uncertainty around his knee and whatever that kind of bizarre situation was that lingered throughout the season. So they became a pass only team. Um, obviously, that didn't work out for them. So they wanted to recommit to the run this season. They've obviously done that. They have Cam Akers, who they picked with their first pick in the second round there. And then the veteran Malcolm Brown, who you can expect to see in the red zone. Um, he's a trusted guy in those kind of situations. Uh, so I think we're going to see a lot more effort, a bigger effort, I should say, for this team to run the ball. But on the other hand, they do have several weapons. Sean McVay used to using three wide outs. This year, we've seen a lot more two tight end sets. So I think they're really just kind of mixing it up more so than Sean McVay's ever done uh, since he's been coach. Lindsey Theory covers the Rams, ESPN's NFL Nation. Uh, you know Nikel Roby Coleman pretty well. That matchup with Cooper Cup should be pretty interesting. Slay and Woods, I mean, if the Rams are to throw the ball, this one should be an interesting matchup. Yeah, no doubt. I've actually covered Nikel Roby Coleman since he was at USC. So I, I know him for many, many years, and he is such a solid Slot cornerback. I mean, nobody breaks up screens in the backfield quite as well as Nikel. And obviously, he knows the Rams' playbook. So I, I hate to break to Nikel. It has changed a little bit this season, but I think it's going to be really fun to watch. I mean, Nikel's aggressive. Uh, Cooper Cup is also very, very aggressive in the slot. Those two obviously have some knowledge about each other and kind of their tricks to the trade. So I think that's going to be really fun to watch on Sunday. Now you get a chance to see and talk to, I don't know how close to, uh, to the players this particular season with everything happening, but you do get an up close look at Aaron Donald. Uh, Carson Wentz called him a monster. You know, there is Donald. He is such a disruptor. Uh, but what is the rest of that Rams defense? I think everybody acknowledges how great Donald is, but who are some of the other players on that side of the ball? Yeah, well, right alongside Donald is Michael Brockers, and his return to the Rams was huge this season. He's a veteran guy. He had originally agreed to terms with the Baltimore Ravens before that deal fell through, so he's back. And as Aaron Donald tells us, he's able to do what he can because of what Michael Brockers is able to do up front. Um, a few young guys have really been stepping up. Uh, the Rams are starting a rookie sixth-round pick, Jordan Fuller from Ohio State, uh, at safety. So that was kind of a surprise going into week one. Uh, but other than Jalen Ramsey and Aaron Donald, this defense is a lot of young, really unproven players. Um, but I think that, uh, again, based on how they performed late against the Cowboys, that uh, they might make some mistakes, but uh, it's a group that seems to really kind of thrive in those high-pressure moments. So it's going to be really interesting to see how they do on the road together. Uh, although, as you mentioned, there's going to be no crowd noise for them yeah. to battle. Especially here in Philly, where the home field advantage is pretty big. Uh, Lindsay Theory covers the Rams. They'll be in town this Sunday. You'll hear the game right here on 97.3 ESPN. I mentioned uh, the top two quarterbacks of the 16 draft. Goff was one. Wentz was two. Who is Jared Goff in year five? Jared Goff is a guy who now is taking over the offense, right? The last few years, it's Todd Gurley's offense, and Jared Goff's just kind of the conductor of it. Uh, but this year, this is Jared Goff's offense. Uh, he's the leader of the group. 
Um, and he's a guy who's hungry to kind of bounce back. He knows last year was a down year, and he wants to be more consistent this year. Um, one thing's always true about Jared. He has an incredibly accurate arm. Um, so this season's really just about him being able to work behind the offensive line. That was a huge issue um, last season for this offense. So this year, Jared can probably just kind of return to who he was. You know, the Rams love the play action. Um, and with a new trio of backs behind him, Jared's kind of got all the weapons at his disposal. So year five, uh, they, they talk a lot about ownership and command of the offense. It seems like this is going to be really the year that Jared Goff is going to be able to put his stamp on what the Rams are doing. Now, let me ask you, as football is underway, everybody loves football, but L.A. is a little different sometimes. The Dodgers are the best team in baseball. The Lakers, how many times are the Lakers ever going to play in the Western Conference Finals at the same time that the football team's playing? Where are the – are they kind of flying under the radar a little bit here? Yeah, I think so. You know, like you mentioned, the Lakers, this is such a Lakers town. And right after the Lakers, it's the Dodgers town. Um, so those two teams are always going to kind of steal the shine. Um, so the Rams right now are, are a bit under the radar. Um, although they, I will say, just even walking around Los Angeles, you see more Rams gear than ever before and whatnot. So their they're fandomonium around town is growing. But uh, again, they're still firmly behind the Lakers and Dodgers, and probably for good reason. Those two teams have been around a very long time and have uh, strong histories of success in L.A. Now, Lindsay, obviously uh, that's a very tough division out west. What kind of buzz is this particular game getting, that the Eagles you know, went out there, beat them in 17, then won the Super Bowl, and then the next year they were able to get the win here with Nick Foles? So is this game, you know, is there a big circle of importance around this game this early in the year, knowing how good that NFC West is? I mean, the cliche answer is going to be that every game is important when you're only playing 16. Uh, but I don't, I really don't get the emphasis from the Rams or the sense from the Rams, I should say, that they're putting more, any more emphasis on this game than any other game on their schedule. Um, obviously, the NFC West opponents are huge. But to them, I think this is really just about going back east and conquering what's going to be the first of, of two long road trips and making sure that they can kind of take this COVID show and their little bubble on the road and, and still perform. So I think that's actually a little bit more of a, of a focus than must beat the Eagles. I mean, obviously they want to beat the Eagles, but as far as circling it with any extra importance, I, I don't think they have. Should be interesting this Sunday, one o'clock right here on 97.3 ESPN. She's Lindsay Theory, ESPN.com's NFL Nation covering the Rams. And she, like all guests, appeared via the boardwalk Honda hotline. Lindsay, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. All right. And, of course, the Eagles and Rams, you can hear it all here. The coverage begins at 10 o'clock in the locker room with Billy Schwein. Merrill and Mike have the call at 1 right here on 97.3 ESPN.